Hey, everybody. We've got the next episode of Open at Microsoft coming, and I've got an exciting guest today. Mohammed Danish is going to be talking about Winget Create and how you automate your CI CD pipelines. You're not going to want to miss this. Hey, Mohammed. So I'd love to know what your thoughts are on how people can automate their publishing whenever they submit a package so that the manifest is in the Winget community repository. Thanks for the introduction, Demetrius. Um, it's great to be here. Uh, I know that in a previous episode of Open at Microsoft, we talked about Winget Create, uh, its interactive mode, and how we can use that to submit packages. Uh, we even pointed some of its bugs along the way. Uh, the good news is that uh, those bugs have been resolved. And today, I'm excited to delve into uh, what I consider the real power of Winget Create. It's uh, autonomous update mode. Uh, this mode is particularly useful if you're a publisher uh, who's looking to automate releases to the community repository. So we'll look at how to use this uh, autonomous update command, and then uh, we'll look at a couple of examples of repositories that have uh, integrated this tool in their release pipelines. So uh, first things first, if you don't have Winget Create installed, it's really simple to install it. You can uh, download the latest release from the uh, releases section, or more simply, you can just use Winget and use Winget install command, and that will download the package for you as well. So once you have that installed, you can type Winget Create, and uh, to verify that you have the correct package installed, it will show you the help text and all of the available commands. Uh, the one we're interested in today is the update command. And I'm going to be using the example of the NuGet package to show the capabilities of this update command. So earlier today, I performed uh, a search for the NuGet package in the WinGet repository using the WinGet search command. It showed me a bunch of packages that matched my search query. I know the one that I'm interested in is uh, the package ID Microsoft.NuGet. And then I used the WinGet show command uh, passed in the package ID and the dash dash versions to list all of the available versions in the uh, package repository. Uh, I see that the latest version is at 6.7.0, but I was more interested in installing the 6.6.1 release, uh, which I don't find here in the community repository. So uh, I'm actually going to be using the winget create update command. And then I have to provide the package ID which in this case I know from the previous command is uh, Microsoft.NuGet. And then I have to provide uh, the necessary metadata needed for the update scenario. So I, I have to provide the version, the new version, which I can do through dash V or dash V version, which I know is 6.6.1. And then I'm going to be passing in the dash dash URLs. Uh, uh, the important thing to note here is that the number of new URLs must match the number in the previous manifest. So uh, to view this information, we can actually go to the Winget packages repository that hosts all of the packages uh, uh, of the Winget source. And then under the manifest directory, I can manually find my package there. Or my personal favorite way is actually to use the Winget create show command and pass in the package ID. And since I'm only interested in the installer manifest, I'm going to be passing in the dash I. So this will actually fetch the latest manifest for me from the GitHub repository. So I don't have to leave the CLI and go to the browser to view this information. Uh, I see under the installer section, there is a single uh, installer node. So that's uh, my queue that I only have to provide a single installer URL, which I know by hand that it's this URL. So that's all the metadata necessary for the autonomous update. I can just simply pass the submit flag. And for the submit flag, it actually requires a GitHub token, which uh, there's already documentation on when Git creates readme on how you can generate this token. Uh, I've actually gone ahead and uh, use the winget create token command. So I don't have to provide this uh, here in line. I, I have stored this in my local cache, so I don't have to specify this here. So before I make the submission, uh, I can actually control the repository where the submission occurs. I can access the winget create settings through the winget create settings command. And this will open in 
my uh, the settings in my default JSON editor. The settings we're interested in is the Winget package manager repository. And by default, it submits to the Winget packages repository, but maybe uh, you want to submit it in a private repository, or maybe you want to submit it in your own fork for testing purposes. So you can actually modify the repo here. So now uh, I can finally run this command and we'll see that winget create actually fetches the latest manifest from the community repository. It downloads and parses the installer URL. And once the update is successful, it will generate a preview of the manifest for me. And since I've passed in dash test submit, it's going to submit this pull request automatically and open it in my browser once that's done. So you can see it actually submitted it to my fork because that's the repository we configured in our settings. So that was a pretty simple update. Uh, however, sometimes uh, the update experience may not be as smooth as we've seen so far. So earlier I was trying to use the same update command for another package or uh, oh my posh. And I noticed that Winget create failed and screamed a bunch of error lines at me. So fun fact, the publisher of this package has already automated the releases through Winget create. So they've already figured this out, but I'm just using this as an example of what could go wrong, what could go wrong in an update scenario. So understand to understand what's happening here, it's always a good idea to view the previous manifest using again the Winget create show command. And uh, it looks like I've specified six URLs. And if we look at the previous manifest, it looks like, in fact, I'm correctly matching the number of installer URLs. So there, there's no issues there. So what's actually happening, and I'm going and I'm getting a hint from Winget Create uh, in the solution uh, for the solution uh, is that. Winget create actually tries to map each installer URL uh, to a specific installer node in the manifest. And it looks at the installer URL and the downloaded binary for this metadata. But sometimes it may fail to find enough metadata uh, from the installer URL or the binary. Uh, fortunately, uh, there's an easy fix, uh, which was being hinted at in the error message itself, that I can explicitly provide the matching for Winget create. I can say to Winget create using these overrides that, hey, Winget create, this installer URL is actually meant for the x64 installer node. And since there are two of them, I can further filter it down and say that it's actually meant for the user scope. And, simple, and similarly, I can say that this URL is meant for the x64 machine scope. And this way, I can specify for each URL exactly provide the matching for winget create so there's no issues there so hopefully if i've used these overrides uh, architecture and scope overrides correctly uh, this should work now and uh, yep it does perfect so let's look at now how we can use this automation we've learned so far and how we can integrate it in a CI CD environment. If we head on back over to the Winget Create documentation, we can see that there's a section for using uh, Winget Create in uh, a release pipeline scenario. If uh, there is a reference implementation, if you're using Azure as your pipelines or more increasingly popular if you're using GitHub Actions as your CI pipeline, uh, there are a bunch of repositories that have already implemented this. So uh, we'll le let's take a look at how the guys over at Dev Home use Winget Create. It looks so like you've that PR. <laughs> yeah, in fact, I did. So uh, we see that uh, it's a standard GitHub Actions workflow file uh, under the dot GitHub workflows directory. And uh, it basically consists of a single task that's actually a PowerShell script, which dynamically fetches all the uh, information required for the uh, autonomous update. We see that is its package ID defined. Here's the GitHub token, which is actually uh, a repository secret because you don't want to be hard coding your uh, tokens here. So there's uh, also documentation uh, on Winget create readme how you can set up 
uh, set that up. And basically, this piece of code is fetching the package version and the installer URL uh, from the GitHub API. And finally, we just download Winget Create and basically feed all of that information to Winget Create. And this task runs for every new release published uh, using the on keyword here. So that's basically it if you want to use uh, Winget Create in a CI CD environment. So back to you, Demetrius. Thanks, Mohammed. That was fantastic. I think we've uh, you know, really gotten a deep dive here on Winget Create. And you know, I love the fact that you're helping us automate our own releases with DevHome. It's pretty exciting to see this happen. And I'm really looking forward to seeing more publishers take control and start publishing their manifest in a community repository.